So yesterday I did a test of the Chevron on the run EV chargers here in the lower mainland. There's 14 from West Vancouver all the way out to Chilliwack. And I tested each of them and uh, I've got some results, but before I do, I just want to touch base on those specific chargers. Those, those chargers there, they're manufactured by a company out of California called Freewire and they are not true DC fast charging. And what I mean by that is they are powered by a 240 voltage uh, power line. And what they do is they charge an internal battery, which is 160 kilowatt hours. And that's what's actually charging your car. And what they do is they charge those batteries and then those batteries charge your car so that's how they're able to provide fast charging from a 240 volt uh, line now typically overnight it's not very busy so those batteries get topped up and then throughout the day they're kind of going up and down through the charge cycles and at some point if they're heavily used like the one that's on oak street uh, they go into conservation mode, which limits them to 17 kilowatts for both chargers. So if two people are plugged in, the best they can get is like eight kilowatts. So that did happen to me yesterday, um, but only once. Um, it was at a couple other locations as well for other charging, um, for other people charging. So I just want to touch base on that and just let you know that they're not uh, true DC fast charging, so you can't rely on them to give you super fast charging every time that you plug in. What I did find was the charging experience, so the faster charging was in the morning, but later in the day, um, I did find that uh, I was being limited. One of the couple two benefits for the Chevron on the run charging is uh, you can go inside and just let them know that you're charging and they'll give you a 12 ounce cup of coffee for free. And if that location, which there are six of them that have the uh, white spot triple O restaurants built into them, you can get 20% off. So I did have a triple O burger. Um, they're fairly expensive. I think I just had a cheeseburger and I think the cost to me was just about $9 with that discount. Um, another thing to touch base on is um, these are Chatamo or CCS chargers. So if you own a Tesla, you're gonna have to purchase a CCS adapter for this to work for you. Um, most Tesla Model 3s and Ys after 2021 are CCS enabled. So all you need to do is purchase that adapter. But prior to that, you're gonna have to get the retrofit. Uh, I believe Tesla's going to be rolling that out later this year, and it's I think it's going to be about $650 or something like that here in Canada. Anyway, um, for my charging, I use the uh, A to Z CCS adapter. They're a company out of Quebec. They've got great customer service, and the adapter comes with a case as well as a locking pin. Again, if you're not leaving the location, then there's no need to put that locking pin on there. So I normally don't use it, but I do have it just in case. So I started my day out at the first location, which was out in Delta at Ladner Trunk Road. So it's Highway 99, Ladner Trunk Road, or Highway 1, uh, Highway 10. And everything went really well. Um, plugged in, got my free coffee, visited with, I, I talked to the guys behind the counter there. They're really friendly. Um, so yeah, that one went well. I've had a few charging problems in the past month there, but fortunately they were working well yesterday and there was someone charging just before me. So I, I did get like 132 kilowatts at that location. So nice and fast. It was about 10 o'clock in the morning. <clears throat> After that, I went to the Oak street location and uh plugged in no problem i think uh, let's see here i was getting 129 kilowatts i only charged for a couple of minutes i think it's three here is what i documented um just so because someone was pulling up and they were gonna 
want to charge so I just disconnected I, I didn't need the charge I was just doing this test um, went in got my free cup of coffee once again and uh, was talking to the attendant and she was telling me that um, at that location it's really busy and a lot of people are complaining that the charge rates are really slow especially in the late afternoon early evening and so what they do at that station which I haven't heard of any other ones doing it is they actually turn off the chargers throughout the night to allow them to actually charge up the batteries so they're fully charged by the morning and so I think she said they turn it on by 7 in the morning anyway that's something I wasn't aware of so that's a tough one there I, I don't know what to do with that I just know that it's pretty busy there um, then I headed off to the West Vancouver location it's out by um, out by the ferries heading out to Nanaimo um, my GPS had told me there was a turnoff. That turnoff was closed, so I had to drive past it and then come back to it. You can't see this charge um, gas station, the Chevron, from the highway, but it's right beside the highway, tucked in these trees. It's a really nice location, um, not very busy. There's four stalls there. There was nobody there. I was able to get a pretty good speed. Um, the lady behind the counter again was really friendly and the coffee they don't have brewed coffee there they actually have these little bun uh, grind brewing machines and and the coffee was really good so I was really happy with that I took a few pictures but there the so if you're there during the summer it's going to be in the shade because it's surrounded by trees but there's a lot of highway noise from the freeway because it's right beside the freeway. But anyway, that that, that was a pretty good one. Um, after that, I headed to the Lonsdale location in North Vancouver, just off the highway in Lonsdale. Um, no issues there, plugged in, charged. Um, was pretty good, I think. Yeah, I noted 130 kilowatts. Um, there are vacuums there, so maybe at some point someone could be vacuuming their car and may impact you, but I didn't have that issue. Um, but when I did finish my charging, I kind of moved over out of the way and someone came along, they plugged in their car and then they just uh, headed off, I, maybe for a walk or something. So um, they left their vehicle unattended. Um, after that, I drove over to... Um, the mountain highway uh, which is, I believe is called Lynn Valley location um, yeah I didn't really like that location the the chargers are kind of moved into behind the the Chevron gas station it's kind of in the back there I didn't look around but it I don't know how safe it would be at night um, don't know what kind of lighting was back there I do know that uh, the first cabinet it wasn't functioning at all for me so it was a total failure there was a gentleman charging his car on the second cabinet and he just he was about to leave so I talked to him he told me he's been there quite a few times had no problems with it um, but I did go ahead and move over to that charger uh, there's a steel fence or wired fence across from those chargers and there was some seedy looking guys there, you know, drinking beer, smoking pot or whatever it was. So I, I don't know how safe I'd feel. Actually, when I finished my charging, I was going to go in and use the washroom. I actually moved my car. I didn't feel comfortable just leaving it, you know, back there. So, um, yeah, just something to be aware of. Maybe if you've gone to that uh, location, Lynn Valley, let me know what your thoughts are. But anyway, uh, I wasn't really pleased with that one. Um, after that, I actually drove all the way over to Burnaby at the Imperial location. And that one was virtually a total failure. There's four chargers there. The cabinet that I plugged into was completely down. So that was two out of the four. And I uh, met a, a fellow subscriber to my channel. He had his Tesla plugged into the other cabinet. He was getting uh, 17 kilowatts. Um, so that tells me that it's down in the conservation mode already. That was um, 1.30 in the afternoon. 
Um, so I had a good chat with, with that gentleman and uh, found out that he really liked my videos and was learning lots and was asking me to create more content like that. So anyway, I, I really appreciate that discussion and uh, I had a great talk with him. So uh, yeah, the Imperial one didn't work out very well. Again, they have the vacuums right there. Um, after that, I drove out to the Port Coquitlam one. Um, again, this was about 2.40 in the afternoon. Um, so there's four chargers there. On the far left side is the Chatamo. It wasn't being used. Uh, but beside that other plug was being used by a Polestar. He was getting about 54 kilowatts, so that was pretty good. Um, I pulled in beside a uh, Ford Mach-E. Um, he was getting 17, but when I plugged in, I dropped him and myself down to 8, so I just unplugged. Didn't think it was fair. I, I really didn't need the charge, but um, so that was in conservation mode. Um, so he was there for a couple minutes, and then he left. And right after that, a uh, Ford Lightning with a boat on the back pulled up, and uh, he went ahead and plugged in only there for a few minutes i think he only stopped to use the restrooms or something but um he did definitely uh plug in and was able to plug in so that that one spot could be used for a trailer um you know in regards i i think someone was asking if any of these locations could support having a trailer i'd say that one stall could um there's the uh west vancouver one it's quite a long ways in so you could pull in if your charging is in the front you might be able to so if it was the f-150 you might be able to do it um other than that there's not a lot of locations that are you know trailer friendly let's say um after that i drove out to maple ridge um so yeah one of the things just be note the app on the phone actually says there's six chargers there but there's only Four. and so I plugged into the right cabinet which are both CCS and I was able to get 114 uh, kilowatts out of that one so I charged for three minutes or something like that and I unplugged and I went and decided I'd give the other cabinet a shot I didn't look to see the lights but the lights weren't on but anyway I went and plugged in and I couldn't use it so two of the four were dead and so that's limiting the Chatamo uh, users, so Nissan Leafs. And they don't have six, there's only four. So there was a, you know, I'm gonna call that one a half failure. Um, I was able to charge, but there'd only be two of us that could charge out of the, out of the four. Okay, so after Maple Ridge, I, I was at, that was my halfway point. So I was pretty happy to get through that. Um, I moved on and went over to the 200th Street in Langley. Um, there was, let's see here, oh, on that one there. Yeah, so at the 200th location, there was, this is where I ran into the vacuum piece, is there was, in the first cabinet, there was somebody blocking one of the charging stalls. And then on the cabinet that I was on, there was someone char uh, vacuuming their minivan. So we were down to two um, spots available for charging. And I took one of them. So then that only left one more. So two out of two out of the four were not available when I did pull up. And again, I, I feel like that's just a flaw in the uh, site setup for the Chevron. Uh, to put a vacuum in front of these chargers that anybody you know should have the right to actually use um it, it's just going to cause some headaches for some people so you know i'm not i feel it's just a, an error on their side um i did go over to 232nd it's right on the highway one and 232nd exit um again they've got four charging units there the one cabinet was functioning just fine on the cabinet that I plugged into, it's got two CCS. Uh, again, one person was vacuuming his car on that one. So um, really we were limited on locations, but it functioned as it should. So it's not really a failure at that location. So it went well. 
But I did. From there, I went out to the Abbotsford, so Whatcom Road. So Whatcom Road, it, it, the Chevron, it's not on the highway. You have to kind of drive past all these, like the Esso and Pachocan, and and go up to these set of lights. And the, there's four chargers there. Um, what was what happened there was there was a gentleman, or I don't know who it was, but someone had their like vehicle parked. It was showing a hundred percent. And it was not charging, but he was taking up that spot. And then it wasn't even there. It was probably off shopping or something or just left it there. So kind of unfortunate. There should be some type of idle fees for that kind of situation to limit people from just leaving it. Especially on a, a, a travel route location. Um, because there are people that want to come and just get 10 minutes of charge just so they can get on to the next one or something. So... There, that cabinet was taken up by that person. The other plug on there was the Chatamo, which most people don't require. On the second cabinet, one of the plugs was not functioning. And the other one, that person as was also away from his vehicle. And it was sitting at 90, well, around 90%. And... Um, there was this lady waiting to charge her car and so she had to wait there. She'd been there already 20 minutes waiting. Um, very unfortunate. Uh, that other car, if they had just moved their vehicle, she could have charged and been on her way uh, by that point. Anyway, idle feeds need to be added. Um, after that, I went out to my last three locations. So Chilliwack's very fortunate. They've got three... Uh, on the run locations out in Chilliwack and they all function just as they're expected. Um, did I find anything wrong with them? No, no issues. Uh, actually, I, I did run into an issue on the one on Yale Road. So when I plugged into that one, it didn't start the charge. That's okay, I just stopped, restart. I did that like twice, couldn't initiate the charge. I tried a third time. I actually got it started, um, and I was then talking with uh, a gentleman there, and I went back about five minutes later or something like that and found that it had stopped charging at the two-minute mark. So, yeah, that unfortunate, but he didn't have any problems with his, but I, I actually had a, a problem with it. But, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think it's an okay um I just don't know if that's a regular occurrence out that way or not. Anyway, I went to the final last location, which is the Vetter Road. Um, so it's off by that mall that's out there on Vetter Road. Um, that one functioned uh, just fine for me. Um, had no problems. I was talking with a uh, Bolt owner there. Uh, he was telling me how um, he relies on these chargers out there in Chilliwack. He, he drives about four to 5,000 kilometers a month. Um, he lives in a condo, so he can't charge at home. So he relies 100% on these DC fast chargers. And so right now he just bounces between all the, the uh, Chevron on the run ones because they're free right now. Uh, prior to that, he was using the uh, BC Hydro one. So, uh, He's finding them to be pretty good out there in Chilliwack. He hasn't done any of the other ones, but for the one out in Chilliwack, um, he's doing really well. Anyway, so yeah, yesterday was a long day. I think I started around 9 o'clock in the morning, and I got home at about 7-ish. Uh, pretty drained. Uh, not sure I want to do anything like that again, but if you guys want me to do maybe a petrol can run or... Um, a shell run or you know one of those ones or test out some other chargers just let me know because um, I'll just pick a nice good day and I'll go ahead and test them out for you uh, in the end um, you know for DC fast charging I wouldn't 100% rely on these they are pretty convenient because they are at a gas station. So you do have like all the uh, essentials like bathroom, coffee, snacks. Um, like I say, some of them even have like the white spot uh, burger things. So triple O's. So those are pretty good. Um, but 
if you're relying on it to give you a DC fast charge, if you're showing up with 10% and you can't go somewhere else, um, yeah, I've, I've been there. I've, you know, in the past, I've gone out to the one on 232nd. It was completely down, drove over to the one on 200. It was down, um, left me sitting there with about 13%, which was more than I needed to get home. So I just went home and charged. But if, uh, if I was a regular EV uh, driver that relied on fast charging or um, I would have been pretty stressed trying to figure out because I, I don't even know where the next charger would have been. I, I do know that there was a shell uh, charger on 200th. Um, and I think if I remember correctly, I think it's like 2650 or prorated at 2650 an hour. So I think that works out to about 44 cents a minute. Um, but I haven't tested that one to know what speed it gets. Anyway, it was uh, it was an experience yesterday. Um, but did like I say, I did find out that these vacuum locations is probably my biggest concern. Um, all the other things you could probably work around. Um, I didn't have to wait at any locations, which was pretty good. I hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching.